Welcome to Inside Monster Jam, powered by Lucas Oil, the official Monster Jam podcast. I'm Scott Jordan. My guest this week is coming off her first career competition win in Baltimore. It's my pleasure to welcome into the Monster Jam studio, Megalodon's Angelina Knock. Angelina, welcome to Inside Monster Jam. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. You know, this is part of the Monster Jam journey. I remember watching this show before I became a Monster Jam driver, and I'm just so happy and honored to be here with you. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Buttering me up will get you everywhere on this show uh, you, you've had before monster jam you've had an amazing life an interesting career at that so let's start with your family uh here at fell entertainment uh we have many ips including ringling brothers uh, circus mm -hmm. which is now uh, out on tour your family originally came over to america with the circus correct yeah, no it's such a great story and i am forever grateful for ringling brothers um my grandparents were actually brought over to america because of ringling brothers and you know thanks to them i'm here today so, so when, when you're a kid, is this something that because it's the family business that you wanted to do or something that was that was kind of placed on you? Say, hey, you know, this is what we're going to do. How, how did you end up involved doing uh, what you do with the Nervous Knox? So growing up, you know, I thought um, it was just every kid's parents did all of these crazy stunts and feats. And uh, one day I realized, well, Nope, my life is totally different to yeah. most people. I fell in love with it. Um, I look up to my parents so much, my grandparents. It's because of the generations before me that I'm here today, and I'm just so honored to, you know, continue that tradition. Um, maybe with Monster Jam, I surprised a lot of people in my family by doing something totally different, and that's part of my story and why I what attracted me to Monster Jam. And we we're, we're going to get there, <clears throat> but my, my parents, my, my dad was uh, in the trucking business. My mm -hmm. mom uh, was a banker. Uh, so for me, I wanted to be on TV. I don't know where that came from, but uh, didn't follow in my family's footsteps. And uh, they've been so supportive of me. So it's great to hear that your family has supported your Monster Jam dreams. But also, let's talk about your career as a water skier, because that's something that you developed at an early age. And you and I were talking off air before the show about your, your summers in Wisconsin doing that. So talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So when people ask me where I'm from, I was born in Sarasota, Florida, but I spent all of my summers up in the Wisconsin Dells. That place holds a dear spot in my heart. Um, I became a professional water skier there at the young age of 12 at the Tommy Bartlett show is actually the third generation to perform and um, be a part of that show. And I, my friends call me an honorary Wisconsin night. So yeah, that has a huge part in my life and bringing it to Megalodon. When I got told that I would be driving Megalodon, you know, that was, I believe that everything happens for yeah, a it's reason. It's like a natural fit. Absolutely. Like I grew up in and out of the, beside the water on the near lakes, the ocean. So such a great fit for me. Um, but yes, water skiing has had such a great and big part in my life. Obviously as a water skier, you don't want to see a, a shark fan pop up behind you, but pretty cool to see that as a Monster Jam fan to see Megalodon coming on the track. So you go from, uh, navigating the waters on the skis to now navigating the, the dirt uh, in, in a giant shark. Talk about that transition for you. you. You mentioned that Monster Jam was something that, that you know, your family was a little surprised by. When did it start for you? When did you say, hey, this is something really cool that I want to try to give a shot? I, so I, it's a crazy story. I met um, Shane Freed and Mitch Talachka okay. years ago. And I remember um, falling in love with how cool and like, I never thought I would be able to drive a monster jam truck i remember mitch uh shane freed putting in my head he's like you would be an amazing driver and i ever since then i have had that in my head but i didn't really know too much about monster jam yeah. um i mean how do you just i mean like okay shane like great i'd love yeah. to but i mean there's not just uh any opportunity to just be able to get jump in a truck and drive it right so when someone had reached out to me about trying out for monster jam that like all those years ago it's just like fate just came to me and it um i couldn't say yes fast enough so i don't have the background no i don't i've never really raced but i've been around you know entertainment i've been in front of crowds i've done some crazy stunts. Um, I come from a long line of daredevils. So at the same time, yeah, no, I don't have that background that most drivers do, but I have that, you know, passion right. and um, I am attracted to, you know, daring things. So sure. Monster Jam is just perfect for me and I'm so thrilled and happy to be a part of it. Well, and as a daredevil, you thrive on adrenaline, correct? So what's, what's the adrenaline level for you like in the truck when you're, when you're out of the track? It's totally different. Um, you know, and I'm 
performing the stunts outside of the truck um, with my other stunts that I do, uh, you know, there's no padding underneath me. There's yeah. no um, safety harnesses or anything. So being attached to that truck was actually very different to me. Um, but also it was such a thrill that I've never felt before. And I instantly fell in love the minute I got strapped into that truck. They turned it on. And the first day I got to drive it with Tom Mens at Monster Jam University, I instantly became addicted. And as a daredevil, you've done a lot, including a trip to America's Got Talent. And we're going to talk about that next day, right where you are. More with Angelina is on deck on Inside Monster Jam, powered by Lucas Oil. Welcome back to Inside Monster Jam, powered by Lucas Oil. My guest this week is Megalodon driver Angelina Knock. Uh, we have a rabid fan base in Monster Jam. Uh, during my research with you, I didn't realize how rabid the America's Got Talent fan base is. There's a, a lot of Facebook groups out there, a lot of message boards, and and you and your dad got a chance to do that. But it wasn't just you and your dad. So the Nerveless Knocks go back a little bit here on uh, AGT. Your uncle Bello and your cousin Annalise are on season 12, and then you and your dad take a shot at it. So when when, when your family was on there prior to that, was it something that uh, you and your dad talked about maybe you guys giving it a shot or you just liked what you saw and it was your turn next the funny thing is is my father and i had never watched an episode okay. of america's got talent um i remember when we got there my dad kept calling simon simon crowell and i kept going to it's <laughs> simon cowell but um so when they approached us they've approached us many times before but they had approached us with america's got talent extreme and it was different and that felt more our pace so that's why we went for it and we were like why not this time um, a crazy story with that. I actually broke my leg that year. So when they were filming it, it happened to be in October and I wasn't quite healed yet. Yeah. Um, so we had to turn it down and then something happened where they had to postpone uh, the filming. So they moved it to LA in January and literally like a week before they started filming again, they called us. I went, ran to my doctor, please clear me. And he wouldn't, of course, like was waiting to make sure that I was 100%. And like I said, everything happens for a reason. Um, I healed up just in time. So we got our second chance, got to fly to LA. And um, it was such a great moment for us um, being able to perform and be in front of a crowd that we, you know, we've never really done anything like that before. Um, my grandparents were on the Ed Sullivan show back in the With 50s. the Beatles. Yes. I, I read With that Beatles. too. That's incredible. Um, so my dad likes to call it the Ed Sullivan show of this era. So it was just really cool to come like full circle in a way and um, perform next to my father, which is my best friend on America's Got Talent Extreme. Yeah, the, that Ed Sullivan show is one of the great moments in television history with the Beatles. So awesome that your family was a part of that. Uh, now, when you were on AGT Extreme, uh, Travis Pastrana was one of the mm -hmm. judges, former Monster Jam drivers. So a little connection there as well. Um, I talk about the the, the sway pole because I, I, it's incredible, fascinating how you and your dad can balance up there. You were blindfolded doing it. What is it like to be that high up on a pole that's basically just uh, kind of could buckle under anything? Absolutely. So... To me, honestly, I feel at home when I'm up there. Um, sometimes it, when people ask me to explain a sway pole, it's an 80-foot metal pole. They were imported from Switzerland. My grandparents performed on those very same sway poles that were on the Ed Sullivan show. Now we're on those sway poles ourselves. Um, I, you know, I can't say I'm just so happy to be continuing this great family tradition. And you guys got to come back and do another season of AGP yes. as well. So wh how, what was the difference between that second year and, and your first year doing it? So a lot of people don't actually know. Um, when we were on Extreme, we got the popular vote. We made it to the finals. My father calls me at 5 a.m. in the day of. He is devastated. He says, Angelina, I... I think I have COVID. Oh boy. And I was like, no, I, I'm sure everything's fine. You know, he got tested again. Sure enough, he did have COVID. You know, he wasn't upset um, because he wasn't able to perform. He was more devastated because, you know, that had basically ruined the chances of us going forward. But to me, you know, I already won. I got to perform with my father, had an amazing moment with him. We had so much support people from all over the world reaching out to us. So I I felt like I won that moment with my father. It means everything to me and I'll always remember that. 
then we were able to go to season 17 and kind of perform one more time yeah. and tell our story to the fans that had no idea on what had happened on the extreme season. So we got a bit of a second chance just to at least tell our story and get to see everyone again because we didn't really get to say bye to like Simon and right. Terry. And Simon Crowell. Crowell. Simon Crowell, yeah. yes. <laughs> one thing that stood out to me was you have that giant ball with the, the motorcycles in it. I, I did a show back in Las Vegas at the Riviera called Splash and we had one of those as well and it was a European family that, that did it talk about just the, the adrenaline that goes through something like that where you have these motorcycles going around in this giant globe and and the control and the precision that's that's that is dedicated to that's unreal yeah you know i mean i have full trust in my dad my brother whoever um is on our team at the time driving the bikes around me and i trust them but you never know when something can go wrong just like anything um it's such a thrilling and exciting thing and i'm so happy that um that has been a part of my life as well so from daredevil to water skier back to daredevil to monster jam superstar you're living it up stay right where you are more with angelina not coming up on inside monster jam powered by lucas oil We are back with more Inside Monster Jam, powered by Lucas Oil. I'm Scott Jordan. I'm joined this week in studio by Meg the Don, rookie sensation Angelina Knock. We've been talking about your career prior to Monster Jam, so let's get to the Monster Jam stuff. You, you get invited to, to MJU. How was it like for you there uh, learning under Tom Mintz? Man, I want to say MJU. I mean, I've had a great experience so far, obviously, touring and being on the Arena Series East. Um but MJU has definitely been one of the most memorable moments of my life. Just the whole experience. That's where I found my first dose of the Monster Jam family, yeah. um, being in Paxton in the middle of a cornfield at Tom Mance's house and being up. Uh, you know, getting to know Tom and Camden Murphy and all the technicians, Fernando Martinez and I had Joe Dennis. Um, we just became one big family. And I, you know, learned so much from not even just Tom, from everyone. And it was just quite the experience that I'll never forget. And Joe and I go back to uh, Universal Studios. So we, we were friends prior to that. And Fernando and you uh, really kind of came into the sports set of Blaze on Fire. Fernando, you know, won three out of his first four events in in, in um, Nampa, Idaho. And then you come in with this uh, huge background as a daredevil. So you two, uh, I think right now, are early favorites for Rookie of the Year. Uh, we'll see what happens as the season progresses. But let's talk about uh, the time from Monster Jam University. And I do want to preface this again. We, we always say that MJU is at Tom's house. And a lot of fans think that we call it that because he teaches there. It's literally in his yard is Monster Jam University. So it's pretty cool uh, to be there in that cornfield. Um, but let's talk about the, the time. How long was it from MJU until you made your debut? So I want to say I my last week at MJU was the end of August and my debut was the end of October. So I had a little bit of a gap there for sure. Okay, so when you left MJU, did you know that you, uh, that you were going to get a gig or you just kind of left and left it up to, to and, the yeah, powers that be? Absolutely. So basically left and, uh, you know, even before I got the offer to come to Monster Jam University, I prayed every single day. I've never wanted something so much. And after Monster Jam University, I did the same thing, just waiting for that call, please. And the minute I got the call from Keith Speller, oh, I was literally shaking. I told him I, I don't even have words right now. Um, not only that, um, you know, when he told me where I was going, Puerto Rico, you know, my mom's Mexican, I'm Latina. So that meant the absolute world to me. Like I said, everything happens for a reason. Everything was just aligning so beautifully. And I, it was a huge dream come true for me. It was October 27th, San Juan, Puerto Rico. You debut in Megalodon. Uh, a lot of nerves for you that weekend uh, when you're sitting out there waiting to go? Absolutely. Um, you know, I think I just got so worked up. You know, you think of everything. Like we were saying, we're in the middle of a cornfield when we're training. And then you get to Puerto Rico and the crowds there were just insane. Everyone's just, the vibe was amazing. So loud, so energetic. And so um, there's, those are things you don't really think about 
very like, much when you're yeah. training. Um, so try to imagine yourself. You're really focused um, training in the middle of a cornfield. You think you've got it all down. And then you get to this arena and all of a sudden all of these different elements are thrown at you. Um, and so it can be overwhelming, it's but at the same time, environment. absolutely. But now looking back, I, it was just such a great moment and I wouldn't take any of it back. I think, you know, we all have to start somewhere. Maybe didn't do the absolute best that I wanted to do, but you know, I was happy with the sure. outcome and just the moment and all of the amazing fans. And then being announced as the first Latina of Monster Jam was also just such a great moment for me um you know i kind of broke down a little bit um at the um beginning there when they announced that because i had no idea and um my mom she like i said she is mexican and she's so proud and that's how she raised me to be a proud latina she came over from mexico at a young age with her family with huge dreams so i really carried that with me that night and that i will forever remember for the rest of my life and the Megalodon team, uh, when you look at stadiums, you have Tyler Duke, Corey Rummel, but for arenas, it's it's all it's all females now. You got Michaela Talachka, Ashley Sanford, and you. So you 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 ladies are carrying the arenas for that that the twelve thousand pound uh, fish there. So that's pretty cool. Absolutely, and both of those girls, um, you know, mean so much to me. I odd. I uh, tried out with Ashley Sanford. I had gotten to bond with her, but Michaela yeah. Talachka, I have known her since she was itty bitty. I have a picture with her on my shoulders and um, I have always been her biggest fan and like, I love her family so much. So just that again, like I said, everything has fallen into place. Um, my teammates, the females, that are beside me with the, their Megalodon drivers, they both mean so much to me and I'm just so proud to be a part of it. And then uh, flash forward here is the time of taping into uh, your first win in Baltimore, which was just uh, last weekend. Uh, everybody that watches this show knows my avid affection for my hometown, Baltimore. So for you to do that, that stood out to me. How was that win for you in the donut competition? Oh my gosh, you know, they were in my headset saying, Angelina, you won. And I was like, no, I don't think so. I wasn't. It was just unreal. I was like, there's no way I already, I won. Like I jumped out of the truck and I was just like, how this is amazing. I, you know, I didn't really expect to win so soon. And, you know, I'm no Fernando Martinez. I'm always just like, I'm his biggest fan too. Just well, how I, I told him he came back down to earth after this win. So you're good. You're fine. Okay. Yeah. No, Fernando, you know, he said, uh, you know, high expectation for us rookies. So I was just waiting and waiting and waiting. And finally it happened in what a moment, um, Baltimore, I will never forget that stop. For I know sure. you love to try local foods everywhere you go. Did you get a chance to try any seafood out there? I am obsessed with seafood in the minute. Um, yeah, I heard I was going to Baltimore right away. So I went from airport, dropped off our bags, straight to Thames Street, um, had yeah. incredible seafood. I love oysters. Uh, I had ceviche. And yeah, absolutely. And looking forward to Washington, D.C. next week and hopefully finding some more seafood That's there. Some great food there. But uh, it does, I mean, it does get better than Baltimore. Uh, next time you go, Jimmy's Famous Seafood, the best place for crab cakes. Jimmy's, if you're watching this, send the crab cakes courtesy <laughs> Scott Jordan to the Monster Jam Studios. We'll, uh, we'll dine on those. But uh, big weekend coming up for you. So now that you got that first win under your belt, what's next? So we've got Washington this weekend. Looking forward to that. I've heard that it's a beautiful arena. Um, then after that, we go to Providence, Rhode Island. And then I believe after that is Cleveland, Ohio, which I'm super excited about. I'm a big rock fan and the Rock and Roll Hall yeah. of Fame is there. So every stop has their great um, things to see and do. And I'm looking forward to all of them. You got your hands full coming up. You're going to be awesome. Those are some great cities. And as for you, it's time to hand the show over to you. Fan questions for Angelina are next. More Inside Monster Jam is coming up. Welcome back to Inside Monster Jam, powered by Lucas Oil. I'm Scott Jordan. I'm joined this week by Megalodon's Angelina Knock. And each week, you can stay involved in the conversation by following me on Instagram at Scott Jordan MJSX and getting your questions in. Angelina, are you ready for some rapid fire fan questions? Let's go. Let's do this. We're going to start with T Sabian 55. Given all those stunts you've shown on your Instagram prior to becoming a Monster Jam driver, what was your favorite stunt to perform? Well, you know, the sway pulls will always have a you know, that means so much to me. Like I said, my grandparents performed them. Um, I got to perform it with my father, but being that this is so new and different to me, I have to say driving the Monster GM trucks has been my favorite now. That's a good answer. And you go from a sway pole to a sway bar. So a little bit of a 
<laughs> similarities here. Um, I'm here all day, folks, with jokes. You got it. Uh, monster Truck Myth is saying, if you had your own monster truck, what would you call it and what would it look like? So uh, oh, let, 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 let's make that a two-part. If you could create your own monster truck, what would it be? And if you could drive any truck that is currently running now, what would it be? You know, I always say I'm the girliest tomboy. Um, I would love a truck that has a little bit of that girl flair, a little bit of glitter maybe. Um, not so sure about a name, but yeah, just some sort of like toughness, but just let sugar on top as well. Sugar on top. That'd be a great yeah, name. That'd be a good sugar one. On top. <laughs> and, and if there's a truck you could drive now that's running, that's not Megalodon, what would it be? Oh, I love the uh, Lucas Oil truck. It's Lucas Stabilizer. Yes. Cool. It's like driving a big uh, semi. Absolutely. And especially that, you know, typically it has uh, women drivers. That's right. Yep. That's right. All right. Cool. So Monster Jam King 29 saying, how has being on a series with Kristen Anderson, Armando Castro, Chad Tingler helped you in your rookie year? Chad, you know, former teammate of Shane Freed. So there's a connection there. But how have those drivers been towards you throughout your rookie season so far? I know it's early, but you've had some events. They have all been so great. You know, each of them have their own talents and have been able to kind of help me, um, in their own way, um, Cody and Armando have been, they were in Puerto Rico for my first event, so kind of felt at home to have them with me as well. Um, and then absolutely like Kristen, I'm so thankful to have her on tour with me. Like I said, again, just everything has aligned so beautifully. I feel like I can relate to her, how she comes from, you know, a legacy of drivers. I come from, you know, keeping up a legacy of my family and um, just how she holds herself. And I literally get goosebumps at the end of every event whenever she wins something, just her message to women and young girls out there. I, I love all of it and I love what she stands for. This isn't a fan question. This is another question from me, but just it's got me thinking. Has your family been out to see you yet on on your series as a rookie so far? Yes, they have. So um, my first stop was uh, was at Greensboro, and that morning I get a or I wake up to a text from my mom and dad that they're surprising me. Wow. So um, that was very overwhelming again like you know all of these small moments that have been a part of this whole journey have been so beautiful and having my parents there for my first event uh on arena series east it was just such a memorable and moment that i will always remember just having them there uh, i already kind of won you know it just yeah. like i felt just complete that's special um i i can't thank you enough for being here in studio it's been a pleasure i wish you the absolute best of luck on your series and uh, hopefully i'll see you in la at world finals yes i can't wait to and uh, if you guys are looking for me you know where to find me i'll be right here next week with more inside monster jam powered by lucas oil i'll see you then <laughs>